Guess what? A few days ago, I met someone really interesting. His name was Aryanath and he was actually a real snake charmer. Yes, how often do you actually get to meet a real snake charmer? So I was really interested to know what he does and how he became a snake charmer. And I sat him down and he told me a lot about himself and his family. Would you like to know? Okay, so let me tell you too. So basically, Aryanath has always known how to be a snake charmer ever since he was a child because he came from a family of people who were also snake charmers. And they taught him the art of snake charming. He even knows how to play the instrument that they use for snake charming called the bean. Yes, that's not a skill that all kids your age know how to do, right? But Aryanath is really skilled at snake charming because he's been trained from a really young age. He told me a lot about his family as well. So as snake charmers, they used to take the snakes in bamboo baskets and move from one village to the next. Then once they'd reached the village, they would actually take their snakes and they'd have a show. Wherever they would go, a group of people would gather around them and be so excited to watch the snake charming. That's incredible, right? To actually see snake charming in this age and era. Well, Aryanath and his family not only did snake charming as a livelihood or a means of livelihood, they also sold medicines that they took from plants that they picked up through the jungles. And they gave these medicines to the people of the villages. And in return, the villagers would give them money or food grains, and this is how they would survive. Sometimes, people would even call Aryanath and his family to a place where someone had been bitten by a snake. So, I asked Aryanath how he knew what to do if someone was bitten by a snake. He told me that first, they'd have to look at the type of bite marks that the person had in order to find out what kind of snake bit the person. I asked him why he needed to do that and he said that's because it would tell them what kind of medicine he'd have to give the person to cure them. Now he told me that sometimes they would be too late to save the person and we all know that certain snakes can be very poisonous and people can die immediately after getting bitten by those snakes. So he was really sad that he couldn't help those people out. But he did tell me that not all snakes are that poisonous and quite a few of them only have that ability to kill someone within just a couple of hours or minutes. But it's really rare. So that gave me a lot of relief. So Aryanath and his family not only entertained people with their shows, they made their livelihood through the snakes and they respected them as well because the snakes were giving them something in return a sense of how to live and a way for them to make their livelihood. So as Aryanath grew older, he even learned some really interesting things. He, in fact, he was taught how to actually remove the poisonous teeth called fangs of snakes. He even learned how to close the tube of poison in the snake's mouth. Those are skills I definitely wouldn't have the courage to learn, would you? But over the period of time, the government started making these new rules. Now that's because people started to hunt down wild animals and, for example, sell their skin for really high prices. So the government had to ensure the protection of these wild animals by making a law that stated that no wild animals can be caught or hunted or killed. So according to this law, Aryanath and his family could no longer keep the snakes. Now this kind of devastated his family because they knew that they had never harmed the snakes and they made sure that they were always well kept. I mean, they were not killing them or even using their skins to sell off at high prices. And sometimes they even gave snakes from one generation to the next. They even passed them on to their daughters when they got married off. Because snakes were a part of their lives and their livelihoods. They respected and loved these creatures. However, despite all these difficult times, 
Aryanath still believes that whatever knowledge he has of snakes should be passed on and shared with everyone so that they know more about snakes and the reality about them. So let me share what he shared with me. So firstly, now we all know that there are many snakes in India, but only a very few of them are actually very poisonous. Now these include the cobra, the common crate, Russell's viper, and the saw-scaled viper. So these four snakes are indeed very poisonous. Moreover, he told me that snakes have two hollow teeth called the fangs, and when they produce poison and when they bite someone or something, then the poison actually gets into the body of the person through the fangs. The interesting thing was that he told me that we have a medicine against these poisonous snake bites, which is actually available in government hospitals. And do you know where this medicine comes from? You'd be shocked. It actually is made from a snake's poison or venom. Exactly, that's incredible, isn't it? So to treat a snake bite, you need medicine that's actually made from snake's poison. Now, he also told me that the movement of snakes is believed to be in response to the bean's music. I mean, that's what we think, that the snakes are actually dancing to the music of the bean. But he told me that is completely not true. In fact, he told me that the snake, whenever it feels threatened, it actually takes a defensive pose. And what it's basically doing is it's taking that defensive pose against the movements of the bean. That is why it's shown to be moving in response to the bean's movements and not to the music of the bean. So the next time you hear about snakes or hopefully even see a snake maybe one day, make sure that you remember all the wonderful things that they can do and that they have a role to play in nature and in the wild. And make sure that you respect all animals regardless of the rumors that you hear.